um, this is all, uh, all the temporary resident applications from abroad that you can have in Canada, you know, or during the, or under the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act. So visiting Canada is one, uh, studying in Canada, and you, we use the term close work permit, and we have the open work permit. That's the temporary resident uh, that, that you can obtain in an embassy of Canada overseas. Uh, visitors, you know, you know, they come, they are not allowed to work, they are, not, uh, they are allowed to study uh, only for the period of time that the visa is valid for. So they can come here to visit and they can say, I want to study English. So no problem. They don't need to apply for a student permit. They can do it. The problem is when the first visiting uh, period of time expires because they need to apply for something else. And the people get confused. Do I apply for a visiting uh, a status or for a student application or whatever? The recommendation is that even if they are going to continue studying English, they continue applying for visiting or visitors because according to the law, it's not possible to switch status between visitor and student. So even though they are studying, it's better to continue doing the visiting. And you don't have to lie to Immigration Canada. You said, this person is going to continue studying, but because originally was a visitor visa, has to continue with that one. Close work permit. Uh, when we said close work permit is when you find, you see, you. you have you seen this uh, brown paper with a picture on it that is the ID for refugee claimants? Mm -hmm. So the brown paper without the, pa the picture and saying work permit is the one that the people use. We have two, two types of work permit. The first one is closed work permit. That is the one that is issued at the embassies. So if a person goes and says, I want to go and work, to Canada, they have to have a, a job offer. And the work permit is closed because they are only allowed to work for the company that is listed at the work permit. There is a name of a company and a period of time that they are allowed to work. So that's why we have living caregivers. I don't know if you have uh, nannies around here. Do you have? Yeah, yes, yes. yes. Also okay. Filipino people. Yes, most of them are Filipino. Now, um, we are starting to receive more people from other countries. Uh, for instance, the Latino countries are now having more living caregivers. Seasonal agriculture workers. So, seasonal workers, we have a lot in Ontario, in the southern Ontario, that are from Jamaica, Mexico, and now uh, they are more from Thailand, and from um, Philippines, and they are starting to bring people from Hungary. So the Mexico and, and, uh, and Jamaica is clear because they have an historical contract between Canada and these countries, and for the last 50 years, they have been bringing around 10,000 people every year to work in the farms in Southern Ontario. The other ones are new programs that are not considered programs because a company goes to uh, a country, a Canadian company, and said, I want to recruit 10 people to come and work in my farm. Mm -hmm. And they do it, and Immigration Canada approve the work permits and they can. But there is not a, a signal, uh, an agreement between Canada and the Philippines, for instance, or Canada and Hungary, or it's just a very private related situation where the government is trying to avoid to get involved, mm -hmm. which is a problem. Mm -hmm. Which is a problem because if, if the contract is not honored, it would be nice that Immigration Canada and you know, the Ministry of Labor intervene, but they don't. And the people is removed back to their country or stay illegally. Mm -hmm. So that's the only options that you have when you are a permanent, a temporary resident application. The, the last one is a very interesting one because it's for youth. They can, for instance, youth that has 
when Canada has a, a free trade agreement with that country, Europe, for instance, Chile, um, other countries, uh, the youth people, the youth that are, I think, younger than 27, uh, they can apply for an open work permit to come and work in Canada for one year. You know, just to have the experience. Because that's an assumption because Canada is basically believe that the, uh, this guy or this uh, person is going to go back to their country to finish uh, university. Or, you know what I mean? It's just one year of time that they want to come and do this. So we are now having a lot of people from France and Spain that are arriving more and more. Uh, we have people from Chile as well that are using this category that is one year which is a problem, because the people can find a job, and then they said, I want to stay for another year or so. Mm -hmm. It's not renewable. So they got to go home, and if they try to do something else, they have to go home and, and come back again with another type of a temporary resident application, or either work permit that is closed, or visitor, <laughs> student, or whatever, but there is no possible just to expand the open work permit uh, for the free trade countries for youth people. Uh, well, what I can give you is the regions, um, you know, Europe, you know, the, the um, European community has a free trade agreement with Canada, so any country from Europe can apply to this. Because we don't have, they are trying to have a free trade agreement with India, uh, and with Pakistan, but there is problematic because they assume that a lot of people are going to come and stay, mm -hmm. and they don't want to go in that direction. In South America, we have a free trade agreement with, uh, with Chile, Argentina, and Colombia, uh, and Mexico, of course, no? um, that was the original free trade agreement. Mm -hmm. Australia is also part of this, and New Zealand. Uh, but they stop counting, you know, it's, it's not that they have many, many, you can go by the G20 list of countries, and I'm glad that I'm here because it's a chaos in Toronto with all these barriers and everything. Um, and you can go and see, but you will see the difference, uh, you know, but you can suggest to them, and the list of free trade agreements are in the CIC website, so you can go and check for the free trade agreements and there is addresses and everything, how to apply and whatever. But my point today is, this is the only temporary uh, resident permit that you can have in Canada. If you have something else, um, you know, it's a little bit risky. Yeah. That's the pen of uh, the, the permit that you apply and also the officer that issue. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, visitor, you can have a, you can be in Canada visiting <laughs> max six months. But the officer that issue the permit to entry at the airport can reduce that time for two days or a week. So the, the, re, the officer that decide how long you are going to stay is the one that stamp your passport at the airport or whatever port of entry do you have. So they give you a visa to come overseas, the person here, and that's for everybody, you know, even if you have a visa or you don't require visa, is the officer at the airport at the port of entry that decide how many days. The studying permit, that depends for the commitment that you have with the institution. You will have to submit, uh, um, you know, how do you say it, uh, registration uh, from a school or college or whatever, and they, they are going to issue the, work, the student permit just for the time that you require to finish your commitment. And um, sometimes uh, you can lose the, the student permit in between because you are not attending a school or something else but the student permit is related to the registration that you have. And in terms of closed work permit, it's basically the same than the student permit. The company offered you a job for a particular period of time. 
and they issue the work permit for that particular period of time. Sometimes uh, there is a long-term, um, you know, work permit, temporary work permit, because you have a contract with the company for four years. So what they do is that you have to renew your work permit every year up to the end of the contract. <clears throat> that's, that's sometimes the best because that allows the people to make an application for permanent residence, you know what I mean, in the meantime. Uh, but most of the time, the temporary work permit are for six months to a year. Um, and the open work permit, as I said, is only for a year. Um, you may face a situation when you have a, a brown paper from issue by Immigration Canada that doesn't have an expiring date. I don't know if you have that, but sometimes the, the officer you know, forgot to put a, an expiring date. Um, the law is very clear that any document without an expiring date is valid for a year max. So some people say, oh, look, I have a, a golden paper here. Mm -hmm. Technically, uh, it's for a year. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't know, and you go to a, a Service Canada, and they don't know either, they can approve a, a social insurance number or whatever. But uh, if they really check the regulation, it's only valid for one year when it's not an expiring date.